Hi, Stu. How are you doing today? Hey, man. How's things, Craig? Uh, doing good, thank you. Thank you very much for your yeah, time. I know you're no a super worries. busy man. We've tried to sort of a couple of times to get this thing uh, together, but we're yeah, finally, we have. finally here. 4.30, 4 o'clock. Is it 4 o'clock in Adelaide now? 4 o'clock in Adelaide. 4 o'clock. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So just tell us, uh, you know, we're almost at the end of February, but uh, just tell us a little bit about 2021. Go on your Instagram page, and I know that you're, you're super busy with touring and, and mm. recording. And so what are some of the highlights for 2021? Well, um, coming off the back of, just just to digress back to 2020, coming off the back mm. of that, we lost, lost some shows and we ended up doing um, – uh, picking some up, which was great. So we did the Jet Age tour, which was our anniversary of that album. Um, Who would have thought? It was, yeah, it's I know. A, right? It feels like yesterday that it came out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And and it's good because it forces you to have a listen to it again. I mean, I'm not. Mm. I don't put on the CBGs too often because it, there's so many. Um, not for any other reason other than you just play those songs, you know, so much. But um, to go back and listen to the album was great. So that was a highlight to be able to do that and, and tour that album and sort of give it a good, you know, birthday that it deserved. Um, we also... I, I, oh, sorry, Stu, because I did see you on, on Instagram. You were saying that when you were playing, rehearsal, rehearsing the, uh, the, the songs off that album, they were really fresh and, and new, right? Because um, you, you, uh, being in a studio and creating a song is one thing, but to take it out on stage and to go live, it's a different animal. So um, we had to rework a few things and just, just so it had dynamics in some of those songs, which we did, and it worked really well. Um, and we worked for a good you know couple of months in the studio, um, rehearsals, to prior to going out so when you were getting when we were getting um you know new south wales was cancelled and victoria was cancelled it just right. oh man uh so we started to scale it back a little bit because we had regionals and stuff like that so but we managed to get over to perth uh albeit you know, we, we were rehearsing um here in adelaide and we had the west australian police ring that night to say you guys can't come in because Sarah hadn't um, had her COVID. Well, they they weren't. They, we needed proof for yeah for COVID sort of action. So right. um, so look, we got through it and it was fine. Um, so that was a highlight just to get out and play um, yeah. amongst all of it. So that was really good. And then um, um, and for, for the 2012, then then we kind of did a few festivals and and then sort of closed down it was just seemed you you weren't kind of sure whether the, from one to the next whether you were going to get a show or it was going to be cancelled i mean we had you know i was getting um emails saying what are you doing in two and a half years time like are you, <laughs> are you free on that date it was yeah. ridiculous you know whatever yeah book me in you know yeah um, but um yeah, so it was good that we got through it and we played some shows and we got to do the Jet Age. So that's that was the main thing for us and personally for me too. Because I heard actually that when they first started back, you had to wear a mask, you weren't allowed to stand Ooh. up, you weren't allowed to sort of shout and sing the songs. You just had to sit there very politely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So we played we played at the Gov in Adelaide, right. um, which is quite a iconic sort of venue in itself. And everyone was seated. So we played our shows to see. But what it did do was open up another thing altogether. So you then, I don't know, it was kind of strange to play to people being seated, but at the same time, it forced people to stop and listen to the music. And mm. yeah, they weren't getting out of their seats. They could sit down and listen to it, which is great. So we, we made the best of it and uh, it was good. Yeah. yeah. And you're doing so, you're doing some recordings in between all that. You've got some side projects yeah. as well. Yeah, we. I will keep writing music regardless. Forever, <laughs> forever. Yeah. So That's... it's. Uh, I've. I've. You know. I, I guess I'm a lifer at these at this point, uh, Craig. So, 
Um, yeah, writing some songs with Super Jesus, and we've been Sarah and I've been going back and forward, and with the other guys, sort of you know being involved as well. It's been really cool, um, Travis and Jason. So um, we, we've got some stuff there, just waiting to sort of get in the studio. In fact, we were going to try and get in earlier this year, um, like last month, but things took that second turn, third, fourth turn, or whatever with the COVID action, and it uh, looks like we may be going in into June, but um and writing songs for sort of just for the sake of writing songs been working with a young um a young girl who's sort of into country music and Mm. yeah i said you know put my hand up and said i'll help you sort of you know write some some country or put my my you know hat in the ring and write some country music which has been really good fun so i've been sort of doing that and also doing um my own sort of um music for for a project that i kind of want to get off the off the ground with, with a few people so yeah. yeah i'm keeping busy you know it's not yeah, it's, like it's all stopped um, it's fun, funny how covid was supposed to stop everything but it probably made you more busy right it, well in some ways it does it, for, it does yeah. it really does it forces you to sort of think outside what you're normally used to um yeah. which is a good thing you know we we all need to kick up the bum um <laughs> but it's also good to for musicians, I mean, I don't know if a lot of people would understand. Um, perhaps they do. Um, but you're constantly touring and working and writing and touring and working. So when something like this happens, it kind of puts a pause on life. It doesn't stop, but it just mm. pause. You know, so you get yeah, a bit more. Yeah, a bit more. It gives you time to sort of add and, and and do more stuff to the music that you, you may not have in the past so you kind of go look at it glass half full in some some ways so Stu, i saw on your instagram that uh, you were part of this uh, tour uh, a couple of shows in adelaide uh, it was for the adelaide music and it says here the boys are stuck in town oh, oh, yeah. Can you tell us tell us a little bit about that yeah of course it was a it was an initiative that was brought to me that all the bands that are sitting in Adelaide at the minute that aren't touring, that perhaps might be a good idea to do a collective show. So what we ended up doing was, it was amazing really, we had Dave Gleason, obviously from the Angels Screaming Jets. Come on. On vocals. We had Rob Riley from, you know, 35 plus years from Rose Tattoo. We had Paul Wheeler, 20 plus years from Ice House. We had myself. We had um, the and um, Vince Condorino, who does that Australian um, uh, Zep Boys show, which is, goes all around the world these days, you know. Um, yes. And we all got together and we played songs from everybody's sort of repertoire, except Suji's, because no one could really, unless we had, you know, string around their you know what's to get their voices up, it wasn't going to happen. Anyway, right. so. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was a great night, and you know we thought we'd do it for um, a bit of fun and just see, because yeah, we're all sort of sitting around. Well, it was like five hundred tickets, you know, right. sold all. Like it was insane, um, and it was it was at the Bridgeway Hotel, and just the opportunity on a personal note to get to play with the the caliber of these people. Um, yeah who are all driven and successful in their own ways it's just amazing you know and and to be a part of it and and sit in the background just watch them work you yeah. know just watch the way they work it's it was fantastic you know rob riley you know 35 plus years rose tattoo and and it's the real deal you know we can't be beaten and, and all yeah. that <laughs> yeah it's the real <laughs> deal right there so it was yeah. such a great night it was really cool yeah wow so and, the one I've shown, we're, we're talking about perhaps doing another one again um, uh, a bit later in the year. Right. It says here that you had, you've got Crown Jewels as well. Tell us a, a little bit about this band. Oh, yeah, Crown Jewels is, is a bunch of fantastic musos. And they just, um, it's a, such a joy to play them. And it's we're just um, delving back into the old, you know 60s and 70s sort of oh, music yeah, right. that it hasn't sort of been 
I wouldn't say the first single that's ever been released off of these bands, but we're probably going for the second or third single people have heard. So it really, Craig, it's just a way to get out and have some fun with some friends and, and you know, if people enjoy it along the way, great. You know, I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's good fun. It's all hometown. So, yeah. yeah, it's good fun just to get out and play some songs. And in 2021, I also saw that uh, it was huge for you. I know you're a huge Kiss fan. Mm. Um, and it said that you were going to support Kiss uh, last year. Yeah. Did that get cancelled? Did you? Is it been True. rescheduled? Yeah. Okay, so 2019, we were going to be playing. And yes, I am, and you, you read right, I am a Kiss fan. I've been a Kiss fan since I was <laughs> a kid. Um, 2019, we were going to be playing with them. Then something happened to one of the members. And then it got postponed, and then the COVID hit, then it got postponed, and it got postponed, and postponed again. So right. it's all set for August now at this point. Right. So this, thrill, this will be fun. What a thrill for you, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's part of the reason why I sort of got into music. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I I went to a – I was taken to a party when I was a kid, you know, dragged along with the parents sort of thing. And um, in the shed they had – an album and a record player and, and next to the record player was the album Kiss Alive. Right. And, uh, and I, I put it on and Classic. yeah, I was just like, oh man, this just sounds great. You know, and I was <laughs> young too, man. I was like, yeah. you know, I must have been six or seven. Yeah. And from then on it was, yeah. All part, of the Kiss, part of the Kiss Army, right? Oh yeah. Well, no, I couldn't afford it. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I, I spent, Thirteen dollars fifty on the Kiss ticket in uh, you know, when it came out. That oh was wow! Yeah, Back right. then, it was the highest um, ticket price uh, Australia had ever seen. Thirteen dollars fifty, so it cleared me out. So yeah, no, no, no money left over for the Kiss Army, but you know, I rocked it. <laughs> you know, I made sure I was, I was a good soldier. Yeah, uh -huh. thirteen fifty. Well, that was the Kiss concert. So nineteen eighty, it was. Yeah. They did, and they did the they did the full show of Australia. They were huge at the time. Mm. Oh the yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure, absolutely, yeah. And I saw, and I saw too that you you like to wear the God of Thunder shirt. Um, oh, and the people yeah. were going, the people were going, oh, it's so controversial, and it's like, yeah. calm down, it's yeah. just a reference to Kiss, right? <laughs> yeah, well, Sarah, Sarah actually got that T-shirt made for me. Right. Yeah. yeah. So she goes, I've got something for you, right? And I said, what's that? She goes, well, you know, there is a God of Thunder from Kiss. I said, yes. She goes, well, I'm calling you the King of Thunder. Here you go. And I'm like, oh, great. Good on you, mate. Yeah, so, you know, she's, she's good value to have around me. Being Absolutely. A band. Yeah. So let's go back to mm -hmm. uh, where it all started. So I do believe that you were born in South Australia. Were you Correct. actually born in Adelaide? or? Adelaide? Yeah, I was, man, yeah. Born in Adelaide? Yeah. Born, yes, Woodville. Yeah. And I read that your father was a part of music as well. He said he was a drummer he was. for a Scottish pipe band. What yeah, a, that's what, right. What's a Scottish pipe band? Okay, you know, the, the where they go marching down on that, correct? Right. Yeah, bagpipes and stuff. He was the drummer. Right. So, you know, marching band. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. So. You know, always sort of tapping on a steering wheel, you know, when I <laughs> in the car, like, you know, counter rhythms to whatever is playing on the radio. And, you know, just the rhythmic sort of vibe was always around. And the rest of the families kind of, um, you know, all got a bit of, you know, that in them, you know, where right. everyone sort of kind of plays. So, yeah, he was a, a, a drummer and a and a Scottish pipe band. And was your mum and, involved? Um, yeah. Were your mum involved in, in music or entertainment as well, or was it just your your father? Uh, no, it's just my dad. Mum's, but mum's, you know, quite. Um, you know, she knows her key. And gee, when I first started playing guitar, she was going, "No, no, you're out of tune here, and you're out of tune <laughs> there." And you know, oh. so she, you know, she she kind of got a good ear for all that. Um, oh, you and it's just part of like entertainment. That. Yeah, you do, and it's just part of entertainment around the house, like especially um, in my family, quite a big, big family, and and you know, we all get together and sing songs, and and so it was always part of the whole thing was music, you know. And, um, and what sort of what sort of music were you uh, listening to at that time in Adelaide? Well, 
Okay, so if my dad was doing that, then my sister was into Motown right. and the dance scene. Then I had my other brother who was into Bob Marley and the Whalers. Ooh. I had another brother that was into the Faces and Rod Stewart. And I had another brother that was into Queen. So it was oh. constant. Right. I'm constantly listening to like A grade material, you know, it's fantastic. So who's putting who's fighting for the record player, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, yeah. so it was a good, good sort of collection. So why all of a sudden then? I would just assume that you'd want to play drums then to be like your dad. Why was yeah. it then changed to a bass? To bass? Yeah, it was um, more so just through um, friends of mine. You know, you sort of there's a certain period where you kind of go, you know, you look at that sort of thing. It's like, you know, that's kind of rock and roll. You know, it's not, not rebellious <laughs> enough, right? You know, yeah. it's marching in time. Um, but um, so just, just breaking away with some friends and stuff like that. And and classic, you know, started playing guitar, actually. Right. Um, yeah, and, and never stopped. So I've been playing guitar the whole way through, really, you know, learning. I'm still learning. Um, and... Um, so friends needed bass play. We're getting a band together because we were going to conquer the world. <laughs> now we were we were fifteen or sixteen, fifteen years old, I'd say, and yes. there's no stopping us. We we were going to climb over everybody to get to the top. <laughs> so <laughs> so we needed the missing link was a bass a bass guitarist, and I said, right. well, you know, you guys have sold me. I know, I, you know, to the top of whatever i don't know but i'll go i'll go well along for the ride so yeah i started playing bass man and and yeah, right. since then i really enjoyed it. i in fact I, i've delved into it i really love it yeah right and tell us about the the adelaide scene like i don't know too much about the adelaide scene mm. i know some bands from there but at that time like in, in the in the 80s like what was it like like the music scene there yeah, it was a lot of rock and a lot of metal, obviously, you know, mm. hard rock and heavy metal. It seemed to dominate um, late 70s, early 80s and mm. and all that. So, um, you know, that's kind of where we fell in line with my first band, Who's Who, is what it was called. But, um, uh, but on the back of that, coming out to the other side of that, there was an underground thing that was starting called alternative music, you know. Mm. The, the 80s which I, I'm, I may be pushing forward a bit too fast I'm, I don't know no. but um so there was the east end of Adelaide where a lot of you know people would congregate and play and you would see one band you know this minute then they'd be across the road for the late shift over there and you would see right. it was so healthy so healthy it was great um and this is where the Super Jesus start was born out of all this so we were all sort of around and kind of knew each other and knew of each other. And um, Chris and I, Chris Tennant and myself, um, had known each other for years, right. in fact, yeah. for years prior. And um, he had sort of pointed me in a direction of McLeod, Sarah, and um, to play in the band with her. So Sarah and I essentially got together first and then everyone jumped in on that right so yeah so that's so, kind of how the synergies came about at the tail end of all the rock and all that and the start of all the alternative sort of scene so, so i do believe that chris Tennant was sort of leading the charge like he'd already been in previous bands before and was sort of like getting yeah. all you guys, getting all you guys together and he's been in different bands in adelaide yeah that's right chris <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, just um, he was so. I mean, he still is. You know, I just don't see enough of him, really. But um, yeah. all the world, for that matter, we don't see enough of Chris. But um, yeah, he's such a great talent. Um, you know, he's just coming in with gold every every sort of rehearsal, and we just go, man, it's fantastic. You know, so, and that's how the songwriting relationship sort of came about with Sarah and Chris. Mm. And you couldn't help but sit back and go, man, that's fantastic. You know, I just want to be part of it. So. Yeah, and at, at that time, uh, I mean, I mean, yeah, I'm getting a little bit forward as well. But the baby animals at that stage were huge. Um, at that stage, yeah. they had a, that that a real big, you know, couple of albums there, and they were the biggest band. 
and Australia. So was there influences there or you, you wanted to do something? Because I know in yeah. media, Sarah, Sarah kept on saying, uh, we're not the baby animals, you know, <laughs> we're the yeah, yeah, for we're sure. gonna, we've got a different sound. Yeah, well, so. I guess, I guess you can't, we, we, we weren't, I mean, you could not hear the baby animals wherever you, wherever you went. I mean, as you said, like they, they, and they are still playing massive shows. Yeah. Right. And more power to them. It was just not something that we sort of wanted to go down. We wanted, you know, we, we kind of wanted to get our own thing going on and yeah, a bit, you're a bit sensitive after, you know, 10 months in a rehearsal room, um, thinking you've got your sound and somebody says, oh, you're like this. And it's like, oh, <laughs> but if, if, you know, I've just spent seven days a week for 10 months and like <laughs> learning and doing this. Um, so yeah, we, we were cool. It was just, we trying to make our own groove and just, you know, tell people we're a different sort of thing than what perhaps they were. And yeah, and that's so got, how we. So you got all the band together uh, in Adelaide and how long was it before you played your first gig? Were you sort of making sure that you got the, you know, a live sound and getting mm. everything ready with, 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 with songs? Yeah. How long we. We rehearsed uh, and songwriting 18 months straight. Yeah, right. Wow. Seven days a week. Seven days a week. No. So, so it was it, like it all, was just, all in or nothing? Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. it was, it's funny, and I don't want to sound like an old old crooner dude, but, you know, I go to rehearsal rooms, and I still, yes, I still do go to rehearsal rooms, and people are like, oh, man, you know, how'd you make it? And I go, well, you know, obviously there's a certain amount of luck, but um, let's look at your program. How often are you rehearsing? Oh, we get together for a couple of hours on a Monday night and drink. <laughs> and I go, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <That's>, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. I tried to, we, we tried to fast track it by doing seven days a week for 18 months. And that's wow. how, how we sort of rolled. And, and it was, lit, you know, rain, hail, shine, heat, birthdays, anything was celebrated in the rehearsal room. That's how we did. Mm. So you named your band too, it was Help's Kitchen. It was, uh, yeah. In 94. In and mm. why why was it why was it that name that sort of stuck out? Was it just, you know? Oh, you know, yeah, well, Chris, myself, and a couple of our friends would get together on a Friday night and um, after rehearsal, of course, um, and get together and read. We're all reading different books and we'd all sit down at coffee and, and have a chat about our books and you know, where you're up to and yours. So essentially you were listening to four books in one night. You know, every Friday night was a catch up. It's not a bad idea, yes. by the way. Um, <laughs> so it just so happened it was freaky in everyone's story was hell's kitchen oh yeah right yeah yeah my was uh, you know someone was a serial killer someone was a mobster's book someone was something else and we just said then you know we got a name hell's kitchen it just it had to be what a great name so that's what we did so we recorded demos um we, we went okay this is what we're going to be called fantastic posters went up if i had my if i was closer to my storage shed i'd show you some but uh we had posters made up hell's kitchen all the rest of it and we we handed out the demo tapes to all the clubs but it right. it gave such a at that point it was just a, a heavy metal, metal con yeah. connotation like so yep. i i i probably would would say there's some um cast still sitting in the back room of a lot of clubs in Adelaide because we wouldn't have gotten a a gig but um and it wasn't until and w so we did this coming out of the game with hell's kitchen and all the rest of it um and it was we got picked up for the local stage for a big day out because there was a bit of a groundswell people had started talking who is that man behind those doors for 18 months you know yeah. what's wrong with those people <laughs> need their heads red yeah you know, whatever um and on the eve of the big day out you had to submit your name and it was the eve you had till eight o'clock on a friday night or thursday night mm. and we're sitting there i get a phone call hey Stu, what do you think of this name 
the soupages. And I went, I like it. That was good. <laughs> I like it. I said, yeah, why don't we change our name? And I'm like, but what about all the people that had seen us with Hell's Kitchen? Don't worry about it. We'll start new. And I went, okay, cool. Let's do it. Big day out. First show, Super Jesus. Yeah, so we, we put it in about 6.30, 7 o'clock that night. We changed the name and then it went out. That's and, that I was, that one. and I read the Chris was saying, like, at that time, there were so many uh, different bands that had Jesus in them. Uh, yeah. That was sort of like the word, the word of the word of the day or something like that. Something it like was, that. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, back then it was like so prevalent, like Jesus, Mary Chain, Jesus, <laughs> Hot Rod, you know. Jesus uh, Lizard. <laughs> Jesus Lizard, yeah. yeah. And then um, Super Suckers, so, you know, <laughs> Super Grass, you know, plenty. So we just kind of put, a, put the two names together, really. So what I wanted to ask, like, did you get any sort of backlash from having uh, Jesus in the name then? Mm. Uh, sort of getting off topic a little bit, but um, I, I remember when I, I went to my grandma's for a lunch and I had the Super Jesus t-shirt on and she what is this? You know, she, mm. uh, Christ, Christian lady, what is this? And I was like, man, it's just the rock band, just the rock band. <laughs> Come yeah, <on."> yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, not, did you have not, any... so, not so much, you know, like we, we got that as well. Um, mm. you know, we got a bit of that, but not as much as what we got when we toured through the Bible Belt. Uh, then it became very really interesting, you know, um, when they realised, you know, we're sort of loud and alternative and rocking and stuff like that. Then, then you got, you know, then it went neck level. Then it was kind of like people wouldn't touch your gear because you're being right. blasphemous. The same people that, you know, were perhaps up to no good uh 11:59 on a saturday night oh it's 12 o'clock i'm gonna be good now you know i mean yeah, yeah. everyone's got their own gig and peace you know that's cool yeah. um so we just we got a little bit of a backlash uh over in the america and the bible belt but um for the most part we we had a good run you know it, it hasn't been too bad and then like of all of all things like big day out turned into this huge international uh, oh festival here in here in australia and you, you you're playing that as some of your first gigs as the super jesus that, yeah does that pinch yourself sometimes when you look yeah, back at that I did. I did i used to make a joke i said if we're not signed to a record label um in in you know by the time six months i'm out of here you know <laughs> well it, it was pretty pretty quick it was quite a quick uh, rise for the band so we did the first big day out for us um mm. not the first big day out but our one of our first shows big day out and then we handed out um tapes and things we figured we're in a position where we can give managers and and agents whoever our cassettes or our cds whatever to see if we can get some management someone who can take us perhaps the next step and that's where we found our management um aloha mm. management um so yeah there's there's moments and the big day out it just you kick yourself you know you go oh man you know sitting there and you're having your morning cereal or something and you're next to Marilyn Manson or uh, <laughs> uh, Soundgarden or whatever yes and yeah, uh, and at that time like uh you know for the big day out then when did you go from there? Did you get, did you have, like, were they at the, sh at the gig or were they sort of already mm. knew that this band is going to go places? Yeah, I think, I think when you're local, or going, okay, these guys can do it. Um, mm. So we had gotten to that point where, okay, there might be something in these guys. Then we... Part of the um, the packages, and we went all out. Like you, we we did electronic press kits. We did everything to be because, Craig. We always felt that don't let it down. Don't lose sight yeah. at the last minute. You know, like you may have gone into a rehearsal room for eighteen months. It doesn't mean go out to a club and play on a shitty PA system. 
We were taking PA systems into the Austral Hotel, which held 120 people, and we <laughs> would have a PA system that would hit the roof and had to be <laughs> strapped down. Strapped down. I'm not kidding. <laughs> like, strapped <laughs> down. And um, because we felt it was unjust that we do all the work and then let it down with it through a bad PA. So let's yeah. have, let's our music be heard properly. And that was the same as what we did with everything we, we've moved forward. So we, we did an electronic press kit, we did mm. a CD, we did, you know, posters, we did the whole nine yards. So that's how we did it. And we sent it out to management, like I said, and front end loaders management. And funnily enough, um, right. have you ever seen front end loader? I did see them play at one of the big day outs, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Long, yeah. long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. So their management, we, we hooked up with those guys. Right. All right. From then on, and, it's, it's and then you, you did your first EP. It says eight eight stop rail. I I don't I don't remember listening to this EP, but I know mm -hmm. most of the songs from that. Yeah, shut my eyes and a couple of songs from uh, Sumo, right? Yeah, we okay. So we recorded um, twice. We recorded eight step rail. We went over to um, Melbourne to record it. And we weren't happy at that point with how it sounded. So we came back home. We had a budget of about $10,000. Right. Um, and so we used half of it on an EP that we didn't want. And then we came back home and then did it here. Um, made a short film clip out of a local club. And okay. um, yeah, yeah, it was good. So that was the the how we did our first EP and then we expect we pressed up about 1500 copies or something and then that sold like 15,000 copies yeah and right then it wow. just sort of it just sort of snowballed from there hurt. yeah people's ears picked up I guess and and the reason and why some of those songs were recorded is because we co-signed with America and Australia it was the first time in history right. we right. we we co-signed Warner Bros America oh. and Australia and um the americans were saying well we've got to do some of these songs on an album to release there so our american release is different than our australian so it has mm. different songs on it. yeah yeah right it's also a bit similar like with england with acdc they're mm. also combining records and right. you know putting different order lists for the for the album so it's very interesting yeah Sorry, uh, what I wanted to talk before was the the road crew. Um, so you were saying before about the PA. So, do you have you had the same people on on your road crew sounding uh, for live shows? Yeah, we we try and tend to hold on to people and keep a, a tight unit if mm. we can. So, the cycle of the because you go in cycles like you record, you tour, then you're off the road for seven months. You can only expect road crew can't sit around. They yes. grow and work for other people. So, yes. and, and we understand that too. So where we can, we try and use the same source of crew um, because it just, you know, everyone holding these people close and, and help. Yeah, they become part of the team. They really do. So that's the way we sort of look at it. And if we can keep a good team together, we can at least deliver like I said at the start, we can deliver how it should be sounding, you know, but that's, that's right. how we feel, yeah. That's right. So then you go into the recording studio to record a sumo, and you went to Atlanta, right? Or did you record yeah, it for, did. did you record it first in Australia, or was it all in No, Atlanta? no, it was in um, Triclop Studios in Atlanta. Right. So that was, again, getting back was part of the, um, our, to keep America engaged um in their you know what they saw as their band as well as australia so um so we decided to go over there and record and we had matt Seletic uh produce the album and um mm. jeff um album prior and and um and matt Seletic had done matchbox 20 and a few other oh yeah right a few wow. other bands so yeah, yeah. So that that was pretty. Um, he, he was going. He was on a real um, trajectory at that point too. You know, it still is an intelligent guy. Um, so yeah, he was. Um, that was the team we had around us, and so we went into Tricops Studio, where they recorded Hole, Smashing Pumpkins, Siamese Dream, um, right. a hell of a lot of albums. Um, 
and that's where you pinch yourself. You walk in. Yeah. And, oh, here's the ant. Here's the ant we used on that song. Yeah. Well, and there's the bass ant we used for the whole album. Would you like? To, of course, I'd like to play through that. Um, yeah. <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna set you up and do pre-production down the road here. And you walk in, and it's the Black Crows own the place. Oh wow. And yeah, and their trucks rolling in because they've just come off an American tour. You know, I'm looking at you know gold <laughs> albums from around the world, Shaky Money Maker, and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, it's like oh boy, it's sort of you know yeah, you pinch just <laughs> you go man, wow. And I also heard that you actually did a you actually did a song actually in the studio that wasn't when you when when you went over there. I was listening to the twenty anniversary of the sumo. Uh, the record uh, on QQ Music here in in China, and yeah, yeah, she said, "Oh, we actually recorded this one in the album uh, in in Atlanta." So in Atlanta, now and then, right? Yep, yep. So that was written, yeah, in our because we all stayed in the same apartment in um, Atlanta, and we would all eat together literally twenty four seven. If if we thought the the eighteen months of recording at a rehearsal <laughs> studio was bad, you wait till you you live and boot in each other's pockets for a couple of years. Anywho, so yeah, it was written there in the lounge room, and then we went oh. went forward, and and um, Matt Soletic and Chris Tennant arranged all the strings, and wow. yeah, yeah, it came out real real good. You got them on the big leagues now. You got an orchestra in in the recording studio, yeah, really. yeah. <laughs> yeah sure. So did you do a tour of the US and how did the US fans sort of react to the Super Jesus at that time? Well, it was kind of, um, we did tour. Yeah, we did. In fact, we moved over there, Craig. So we were living right. again for about 18 months in Los Angeles. Right. Um, and we were using that as a bit of a spring point because we had played a fair bit in Australia up until this point. So, right. you know, the 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 sumo album had come out and whatever we're, we're touring on that then we got out of here and went over there and you re really were starting again not a lot of yes people knew who we were so we would play you know say champagne illinois and we would knock on the door and i would say you know oh, what, what do you want and we'd say, well we're supposed to be playing here tonight <laughs> you know <laughs> and playing to two people you know right at home we were doing them, yeah, you know, sold out. Uni bar, you know. Yeah, yes, bar on so, the hill. Come on. Yeah, bar. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that was interesting. Um, yeah. So we did three tours around America and drove it all, and that was an experience. Wow. Um, so it was no, you know, thing on your phone. It was a <laughs> map. I had a map, yeah. man, wow. like real time looking at a map, and our manager had a huge um. Uh, map of America and a pointer stick and he would say so you're playing here and in two <laughs> days you need to be over here oh, dear. and it's like oh man you know we're talking like it, it was some serious drug yeah. here you go here you go 72 over 72,000 miles in under six months wow. and that was that was that was Paulie and myself driving playing gigs, packing up and driving. So and it wasn't like it wasn't like a full wheel drive. I saw the picture of it on your Instagram. Oh, it's just yeah. it's this little you know, yeah, shoving all the Yeah, John Dram, yeah. yeah. It was John Dram. <laughs> and our manager said, you know, best you guys pull that back seat out so you can have a sleep. Mm. You know? <laughs> so okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll do that. Um so we pulled that out and halfway through the the club decided to get changed um, in the back, and our our cover for our air conditioning had been broken off, so it was just the motor. And she was <laughs> oh, so God. hot; she decided she would get into some bathers or whatever, just because everyone's at this point pouring water over themselves because it's so hot. Yeah. Um, but the show must go on. You know, keep driving, keep driving. Um, and her bikini or her, something got caught in the motor and like went <laughs> and like jammed the motor and stopped and I, oh dear i had a, i had a, at this point i had an inside thermometer and an outside thermometer 
And nice. I mean, we were going, we were heading in through um, Nevada, through the desert, and mm. all the rest of it. I, I for a, for a, a sick sort of joke, turned the heater on in the car, and it was cooler in the car than it was outside, and that's with wow. the heater on. Wow, okay. Anyway, so um, yeah, our heater didn't work. Um, our air conditioning didn't work from that point forward. So yes, <laughs> that was part of the whole. So we're over there for about eighteen months. Did about three tours, and and it was good. Yeah, we were received uh, pretty well. Like um, we started doing it just like we would here. So we would do yeah. uh, LA. We'd go to Vegas. We'd go to San Francisco, and then we'd come back or up to Seattle. Then we or another one was. We'd go San Diego, go down San Diego, Los Angeles, Vegas, up that way. Um, and we started to break some house records. So things started to move, wow. you know. And then, then we got picked up on um, uh, something called um, Road Rules from MTV. Right. They did a little segment on the band. And, and oh, yeah. honestly, as soon as they aired something to do with the band, it was crowds started to sway, yeah. you know. There was, yeah, yeah. yeah. People, oh, you're that guy on TV. Nice. Yeah, right. Pretty, pretty important stuff when you're on TV in America. Yeah, um, so, absolutely. So, yeah. And I saw, I saw a couple of fans even recently asking you when you're going to go back to the US. Are there any plans to go back there? Like once, sort of, maybe not when COVID goes away, but do you have any sort of plans to? to? Yeah. I, I mean, Sarah and I talk about it. Mm. You know, we like to sort of get out and tour a bit more. In fact, a couple of in 2019, we went over to Brazil and played a couple. Oh, I was going to talk about that because yeah, because yeah, I've I've been there as well. So, what was that experience like for you going well, there we and playing a few shows there? Yeah, yeah, it was really good. It was really good. We got taken over there for um, a, a private sort of um, a private party, so enterprise thing, and then we we got over there and yeah, played a few shows. It was really great. It was great. People were warm and receptive and yeah really cool i mean it does it does make you want to get out and do a bit more overseas you know yeah uh, but um, new fans mm, we'd love to we'd love to get back over the states and play and um, you know be good fun and who and knows did you, get to, did you get to see some uh sightseeing in brazil or was it pretty no. much just touring touring no, no. and just yeah that's yeah. right but that's that's touring isn't it like yeah you know, I caught a cab out of London, a cab, and just said, just for the whole, just take me to the sites because I've got one day off. Take me everywhere. Right. Leave the cab running, mate, and I'll pay, you know. <laughs> that's, how I did it. That's, that's how I sort of my sightseeing for the day. So when, when you yeah. can, if you're, not, if you're not, you know, too tired from driving or playing all night. Mm. Yeah. So when, when you do come back to Australia, it just all blows up. You're winning Aria Awards, uh, mm. Sumo, and you're doing you know massive tours with all, all different types of bands. Uh, how had it for you? Was it difficult at that first stage to sort of you know all this attention coming back to Australia? Yeah, yeah, it it was. How did you um, sort of deal with it? Yeah, I just sort of stayed inside. That's how right. I dealt with it. I didn't go outside, um, yeah. and then. I was started, there was phone calls that were, you know, from the newspaper, how they get your number, I've got no idea, but, um, <laughs> and then, you know, all sorts of sort of things going on and you try and keep a steady keel, you know, um, through the whole situation. Look, it goes back to your family. I've got good family around me, so, yes. you know, they, they won't. Um, so that's kind of personally how I, I just surround myself with family and kept a close knit of, of friends and that was about it. So, but, um, you know, but there was a lot of pressure on the band too, you know, to yes. be, if we were touring, um, that's, that's the one thing we didn't expect that yeah. it was the amount of pressure that was building because it was getting because the band was getting bigger um, and we just come off of, you know, nearly two years of touring that album, <laughs> like worldwide, um, to go, okay, well, 
And I mean, it's not a sane environment to be with the same people, you know. But, <laughs> but it's it's not sane, I'm telling you. Sometimes um, you just want to strangle them, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure they want to strangle me too. But it's <laughs> it's just um, you know, one of those things where it it just puts again, that's just amount of amount of pressure that you, you sort of don't expect and and eventually, you know, Chris ended up leaving the band. Um, yes. While we were in Los Angeles, so yeah, he he just sort of said he he'd had enough of it. And, yeah, I mean, it was, because it we, seemed very it interesting at that time, sort of, because he, he was, uh, from what I read, he was doing a lot of writing for the music, um, and yeah. then for him to then all of a sudden just leave. Did you come into the forefront then uh, of starting to push your, your ideas in more? Or? Yeah. Uh, it, it's a huge dynamic change when you're in yeah. something so close knit like that. So what happened was you kind of sit back and go, right, where are we going to go and how are we going to mm. go about it? And I guess that's where people stand up now. McLeod stood up and said, look, I've got some great ideas. You know, check these out. We're great. Let's work with that. We we um, got a new guitarist in, and all mm -hmm. of a sudden things started to move again the, the wheels yes. started to, to move and yeah you do become creative you know you do you can't not be creative so yeah i was putting in some ideas and songs and things like that and yes yeah you know, just sort of seeing how it, all of a sudden it became a lot more organic um because i think out of necessity i think it really yeah. had to so that's uh, where jet uh, age came in and and yeah we got that second album going just before, just sorry, before Jet Aids, uh, a bit of a fanboy here. Um, yeah. I, I went onto YouTube today, and the first thing that popped up was uh, Down Again from the 99 Big Day Out in Sydney. They recorded that, and <laughs> here I am in the front row. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to look it up here. Yeah, so it's the it's the second last song that you play, and yeah, I, I'm here headbanging with my long hair. And... <laughs> and I remember that that day because you, you said on stage that you actually have to finish up and then play a show in Melbourne, like get on yeah. a plane and try. I mean, yeah. is that the sort of tour schedule that you had consistently? Yeah. Yep. So Jeez. that yeah, that's right. So it was we got straight out off stage, mm. straight into a van, straight to an airport, a light seater plane that they had taken the um. Uh, some of the seats again the seats uh, for all our gear yeah and, um yeah we we went to peaches and cream festival with silver chair that day all right yeah oh, boys <laughs> yeah i think grinners were on that as well i think yeah, yeah it's right. a good show so that's yeah there, there you go that's that's sort of what we were doing yeah, consistently oh, yeah. two and two shows a day. That, that's that's crazy. And then you got to find yeah. sleep there and stuff like that, and they get ready. Yeah, totally, and... totally right. Yeah, and um, huh. you, you every now and then you do those recovery. You know, recovery. They're they're doing it on radio. Yes. So you do recoveries. Now you had a six a.m. call <laughs> to to do those. So yeah. you're not coming off stage till two o'clock in the morning or whatever. You yeah. Know? So it was always a pretty shady sort of turn around to get out into the to and set up and play again for um for rage but what a great program that has been yeah definitely for Australian music and I actually uh, saw Sarah doing like a a reunion oh uh, yeah of recovery and she did some interviews there and talking about it and they had silver chair there as well it's it great great to see <laughs> and again something like it, it, as if it was yesterday, <laughs> you know, recovery. So. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, yeah, let's talk good. about Jet, Jet Age. Uh, go from a, a, a very high-selling sumo album to another good album out. Wow, Jet Age um, mm. and Gravity. I, I still, and when I go home, like, or, or I'm flicking through on the on the airplane, Gravity, Super Jesus, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you yeah. know you've made it. You know you've made it when you you, you listen. You're on the airplane and you and you're in like the greatest hits. So. Yeah, we used to get a buzz out of that ourselves, actually. 
<laughs> go, oh, we've made the in-flight music. Yeah, <laughs> in-flight music, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we always have got a bit, big buzz out of that. <laughs> um, so Gravity, yeah, I remember um, and that album. So we all had relocated to Melbourne. Again, right. moved after the departure of uh, Chris, we moved to Melbourne mm. town, uh, uh, guitarist Tim Henwood, and then we we lived there for nearly two years. In Melbourne, so, Sarah. So what did so what did Tim bring into the band, Stu? Well, well what, what sort of... his he, he was um, you know, he had a very calming effect on the right. band. You know, we were all pretty highly, you know, me, you know, a tough mechanism that yes. was on the road. You know, so when when Tim came out, he sort of had a very don't you know don't stress. Don't stress. It's okay. We'll get it. So, um, and 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 above all, and above more than that, was his songwriting. He had a great sort of feel for songwriting as mm. well. So we were, we were lucky. I mean, gravity in, in itself. You know, I mean that day, McLeod came home at eight a.m. in the morning and said, "Ruddy, check this out." Yeah, right. He played me some of Gravity. I went, "Jeez!" Now I heard "Shut My Eyes" because "Shut My Eyes" wasn't going to be. Um, that was a flip of the coin. If you like it, we'll play it. If you don't, if you don't like it, we'll get rid of it. I said, "Oh no, we've got to play it. It's great. Yeah. It's not mine. Yeah. Same as Gravity. I said, you know, it's a good, it's a good tune. I could feel, I could feel it straight away. So, yeah. Right. And you probably never remember this, but I actually sat down next to you at the bar on the hill for that tour, and mm -hmm. I, I don't know how, I don't know how it happened. Uh, you might have just been taking a break you know, after sound check, but we talked about a set list, and I think you said something like, "It's my turn to pick the set list." And I said, uh, "As long as you got down again in there, I'll, I'll be happy." Yeah. And uh, <laughs> there I think you, you played. It. I think you played it first, actually, and yeah. I don't think you normally play down again first. It's only towards the no. uh, encore of the set, right? Yeah, that's right. It, it has been towards the encore of the set, but um, mm. yeah, we th we throw it around every now and then to see where it might sort of go. And obviously, that night it, it had quite an impact on us, uh, Craig. So we've decided to put it <laughs> first because <laughs> we and, weren't really doing it first. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I remember you saying it was your turn to pick the set or something. But who does? Who does pick the set? Is is it like you take a turn or? Is it normally yeah. just Sarah, just with the guitar tuning and sort of um, the flow of yeah, the Yeah, guitar flow tunings of the are, uh, yeah, good, good point there. Guitar tunings are always, we try and get them, um, so there's a flow of two or three that are in the same tunings. Hmm. But as far as songs go, we, we sort of, usually it's between McLeod and myself, we'll just sort of go down to... Um, where we're at and how about we put this one in nah no, let's do it next time yeah that sort of thing that's usually yeah. i had myself yeah and then all of a sudden you go from recovery and then jet mm. age comes out and you're playing on uh, rove rove live and all these tv shows uh, the footy yeah, shows TV. you know so all of a sudden just boom uh with yeah. this so uh and then after this tour i do believe the guitarist left Again, right? Is that yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah, Left yeah. The... Pretty right. Yeah. So Tim ended up going to do his own thing mm. after that. So we yeah. yeah. We anyway, getting back, yeah, we did. We did seem to play a lot of T V shows. Yeah. At that point. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, we got through and again we, we toured um uh, Secret Agent Man tour, we did a mm. Gravity tour, we did the Jet Age tour, we did we toured and toured and toured with that album as well. Um, by the end of that, um, Tim had started to sort of concentrate on perhaps some of the things he wanted to do, mm. which, um, you know, I mean, no one's locked in to do yeah. anything, you know, you don't want to do. So, yeah, so he decided to move on. And again, we were sort of looking for another guitarist. Isn't that so frustrating, but when you're you're on you're on yeah. the you're on the right path and it's like ah oh, damn got to yeah so how, how yeah. do you how it do you was. select someone to that like to come straight in and like yes this is a new guitar player 
what's the process? Is it your management? Do you are you looking for oh. guys to come in or girls to come in and and sort of try out? How does that process work? So everyone's sort of um, involved with the band at this point and sort of thinking for the band. So you have mm. a support mechanism around you whereby it's management or it might be record company. Everyone's sort of, sort of thrown in an idea. Why don't you saying that the record company will kind of like you guys do what you got to do and we'll see you when you're ready. Mm. Um, but it was mainly us and sort of people suggesting guitarists and what have you. And yeah, so um, we started to, we had a schedule to to do our third album, rock music. Yeah. Um, so, so at this point, what do we do? Do we um, postpone an album, or do we go forth and 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 uh, and start recording again? We got Chris back for some of that recording. Right. Well, people don't realise. Yeah, mm. he came in. He flew up and did some guitar work. But at right. this point, Sarah and myself had started to write a fair bit more and. Yes. And stick to, stick together and come out, and we did a, a closer a song for the end of the album, and you know, so that that line was slowly starting to open up between us, um, and then um, so we recorded as much as we could. Or we're, actually, no, we recorded that album my, as the three of us. Yeah, having people come in to play guitar every now and then. So, I just yeah. have met. I just have memories uh, when I bought the album. I have it had like a DVD as an, a bonus footage, and mm. I just remember you guys just sitting like in a farm in, in the Central Coast, just just chilling and like, oh yeah, we're we're, we're just chilling, and then we feel like we're going to jam. We go in there and just bash it out. Yeah. <laughs> I love that yeah. sort of relaxed sort of atmosphere because I guess like you've been touring for so long, and then now all of a sudden yeah. it's just like going in there and just. Oh, I've got a good idea for a riff. Let's go into the yeah, into the, sure. yeah. It was like going on a health farm, mate. It's like yeah, right. We're, we're miles away from anywhere. Um, yeah. In fact, it was um, it was Gary Beers from In Excess. It was his right. place. Right. Yeah, and then miles away in the mountains. So it's not like I'm just going to walk down the shop, or I'm going to. You couldn't do it. Like. <laughs> So as much as you're in a serene place, so it's all part of the experiment to see how a band carries on after all these right. years. Anyway, but um, yeah, it was lovely, and it was and it was real creative. You know, you're just going in there. We got our friend um, Mark from UK who had done the Breeders album, and and um, yeah, he he sort of uh, came on board to help out and produce and stuff as well with that album. So that's how we sort of did it, and. We slept there, you know, had my room yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, it was all good. It was good. A really good environment to be, you know, wake up and, and play music and yeah, not really right. have that outside influence. I mean, we did have to face and we did, I think, on that album. And then it was good. It was good to, and I could just, well, just as a, as a fan, stick together was such a good way to sort of where the band was at the moment because you're or the guitarists are coming in and out but you three guys were just like a rock you know just that's, come on let's keep let's keep going right that's exactly exactly what that was mm -hmm. that's like hand on heart straight to paper to music like that is what it's about and you know we um we kind of felt that when we recorded that that um we were worried oh it's like uh, I so I wrote the guitar. Uh, I wrote I wrote it in my kitchen. Um, writing it down on a coaster when I was out right. that night. Right. So, yeah. So that's how that kind of came. Give me a give me one of those you know golf tee pencils or whatever. I'm gonna write some stuff. Anyway, so that's what that happened, and that became our first single off of that album, which is um, then we off again, you know, out out touring. Um, and doing it but this time we held uh we had a few guitarists come in so at this point we still didn't have anyone solidified yet no no one had cemented their place so we had used some people that we know that were playing guitar and then we got um jason sack came in and he took over guitar duties you know seemed to have you know a steady effect on the band at that point he was he was pretty solid so it was great, just what we needed, yeah.
and you went out and toured again. <laughs> another another huge yeah. tour again. But then yeah, yeah, yeah. after the end of that tour, it was sort of like a sort of where 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 are the super Jesus? Uh, what's happening with them? And then mm. I, I sort of come out and said that uh, you're having troubles with management and, and uh, record deals as well. So yeah. and then all yeah. of a sudden, no more super Jesus. So I'm a bit disappointed, but uh, you know, can you just talk a little bit about that? And yeah, you know, of course. Yeah, I'll give you the intel on all of that. Just, okay. Just, yeah. So we, um, at the end of that album, that, so that was our deal, finished with Warners. Right. Okay, so we had, that was it, end of. Um, we had some people that were interested to go uh, further and obviously some that weren't. Um, and you can, you know, you can understand what what year are we in this time at this point? What will be two thousand four? Two thousand four. Yeah. So we went out on that tour and we we played over an hour tour. We played. We started playing some shows. We had parted ways with Warner Brothers, mm. um, and and that was amicable. We, we we both sat down over a table and said, you know, shook hands and went. Thanks for everything. Yeah, yes. we're cool. And you know, so at this point, you know, you sort of thinking we're on our own here. Now, now, now we're back in that rehearsal room. Yes. Okay. <laughs> stop playing. Wow. So yeah, that's what happened. Um, and you know, we were kind of like, oh, what's happening with the band? And then at this point, McLeod wanted to kind of keep moving forward and she yes. put out a solo album. And then yes. um, we just, we were all kind of happy, you know, yes. to just take some time away from it. You know? was, a little yeah. bit, was a little bit of burnout? Would you say it was so. a, a relentless so. touring? In hindsight. Yeah. yeah. In hindsight, you know, we could have played our cards a bit differently. Um, a lot differently, but you know that's hindsight. I mean, it's, yeah. Oh, there's some things we wouldn't have done had we not been pushed and doing that. You know that. Yes. Um, I'm glad we did do. So you know, it works both ways. You got to be humble about it, and you got to sort of take it for what it is. Um, and looking at it now, Stu, um, are, are you a bit more confident now to say no to, to like a, a record label or, or someone like a show that oh, you've got something else on or you, mm. you're recording or something like that? Do you have that sort of confidence to, to, to say, look, no, we can't do it? Yeah, yeah, we do. We do because we we own it, you know. We own it and, and we've always owned it. Big show back. Yeah, big festival. What was it? Yeah. Um, Van Halen. Yeah, Stone Van Fest. Halen. Stone yeah. Fest. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. Van, Van Halen. Um, uh, who else is it? Um, Billy Smith. Joel. Yeah. Aerosmith. What a lineup. Yeah. Pretty full up. Pretty full up. And then all of a sudden, the super Jesus. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. We're elbowing our way in there, you know. Yeah, um, had, it was cool. Did you get approached? Did you get approached to play this show, or was yeah, it managed? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We got approached to play it, so the, I, an offer came through for us to play, it. and we were pretty stoked with that. Um, obviously, you read the paper twice and go, "Why is he for real?" <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, it was really cool. We, we, um, it was a good day. We flew in, and you know, I got to see so many bands. You know, uh. Glenn Hughes from from uh, Deep Purple and yes. you know some of the, the kind of you know that Kings of Chaos band they were on it as well. Right. Uh, Duff McCaig and Death Oh yes, the rest yes. of it. Yeah, so it was a pretty full on lineup of mm. you know rock and eighties sort of dudes. Yeah, was that was that Nick Manus or was who who was who was doing that? Who was doing I'm that show? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. That's some big money there. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, who, don't know who did that, but that's some yeah. big money to pull out those. Yeah, those man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I just sat there and, you know, watched all day. I couldn't believe what I was watching. Yeah, Van Halen. Yeah. Yeah. 
with, with David Lee Roth as well. Yeah, with David Lee Roth. Yeah, I said to him because um, I was just on the side of stage. Everyone had to clear the stage. Right. Um, no one's allowed on the stage, and uh, I just stood in the dark, like stood there like a pole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and um, prior to just coming on, like, so the music and fanfare had started, Dave's got his top hat and his cane and he's ready, he's doing his <laughs> shtick prior behind the drum kit, and they just yeah. said, you're looking, you're looking good, Dave, and he's like, well, thank you very much, man, man. <laughs> 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 I'm like, oh, what That's a great. moment, mate. <laughs> yeah. as, as I'm standing next to Sebastian back from Skid Row. All right. Oh, dear. Yeah. Moment. The, who, yeah. the who's who, but that got the super Jesus back on the road again. Uh, you brought out some, uh, I think, an EP, and you brought out some singles as well uh, to, we to start touring again. Yeah, so yep. back on the road, and then all of a sudden, I see the twenty years of sumo, and it's mm. like you're doing a tour for that, and it's like I cannot believe it's twenty years since I know. the sumo, sumo right. record. And uh, yeah. I was overseas, so I couldn't I couldn't catch it. But I saw some videos, and uh, I've listened to the album that you brought out, uh, the live album. Uh, at oh, the, okay. At the, Gov, the Gov, the Gov, was it? Yeah, we recorded that through Sydney and. Uh, oh, Sydney. Yeah. Right. So the so, so the vinyl. You mean the the, the album, the Sumo Twenty album, live? Yeah, well, I, I, well, I I heard it on QQ Music, which is uh, here in in okay. Hong Kong and China. And uh, yeah, yeah I, I streamed it. I streamed it from from that that app. So oh, very yeah. good. Yeah, so we did. Um, we recorded all through the East Coast. Right. Yeah. So yeah, really cool. the question is, if you're getting airplay, if you're getting uh, QQ Music, uh, why aren't you coming to Japan and and uh, China? Yeah, who's and... up to? Mate? <laughs> well, who's up to? We yeah. would up to. You know. Um, yeah. We just, I guess it's a matter of trying to find promoters that would be happy to sort of take us on and, and you know, That's true. give us a, a thing as well. So, um, yeah, obviously. Uh, but, yeah, you know, we're always open. Yeah, we're always happy to sort of get over and play and whatever. Yeah, and, what, what, and what was that like, uh, playing those songs again, you know, after 20 years? Great. With sumo, yeah. Great. And they need a lot of attention to detail, yeah. Mm. The, the press where I'm here three weeks prior into a band situation where I'm out the back, headphones, you know, playing, playing along, playing along, just relearning it all. God, yeah. that's right. Because you can sometimes drift away from where originally it was, you know, that it was recorded, you know, because live you fall into perhaps habits of, you know, th this sounds easier, you know, this is better to play. When you go back and listen, you go, oh, wow, so it keeps you on your toes. So we took that and we went back into, and we referenced off and back in the rehearsal room. Right. Yeah, so, and it was great to play those songs again. Really good fun. And he hearing Down Again, I would say that that's probably my favourite. And uh, you had a different intro into it. You sort of stopped and then went into the guitar bit. I thought that was really cool. Like, instead of just, like, like the album, and it's just yeah. made it more dynamic. And there you go. And that's that's what we're trying to work on, you know, to make it dynamic on, on stage and everything else. Yeah, exactly. Exactly how we're doing it. Yeah. yeah so, and then the greatest hits, you know, catalog, back catalog uh, on the set on mm. the second part. So, you're playing two, two, two and a half hour sets. Then. That's yeah, that's so, incredible. Yeah. So we'd ha have a, have a break or whatever, and then back on. Yeah. Well, you know, we wanted to do it, make it a sumo set. You know, a big, yeah. a big rock show. You know, a big what? You know, flex the muscles. You know, and that's what we did. We we played for for two and a half hours, and we took it everywhere. You know, we went places that hadn't been pr predominantly getting bands, and mm. took our chances. And some we broke even. You know, some we 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 won so it was really good it was really good for the band yeah yeah really good. absolutely and then like you said before you did you did the the jet age uh, 20 years as well so and know, then we got hit with the, the virus you know and that that's sort of because we still had to go through new south wales and victoria but we we got shut out so right. we, we've um denied and um denied and we just said you know maybe we'll just put it to bed and 
we'll leave it there because we keep in mind we'd rehash this yeah. tour for what nearly a year and a half now and you can't just keep going oh this is that tour again yes yeah, yeah right so we had so, to put it there. So one more thing Stuart wanted to talk about yeah. is that you got put in the south australia hall of fame music oh. hall of fame yeah that's right Congratulations, yeah. that's a huge achievement. I think so. Yeah. Tell us about it, that day. Well, it was sort of something that um obviously you don't expect it and it it meant it was a great deal to me, obviously. Yes. But it was more of a deal to me that my mum could see it. Because oh, I yes. knew it would mean more for her. When are we talking about support crew and all the rest of it? Yeah. And you're setting out, you know, we're talking from a kid, 16 years old, you know, going, oh, you know, he wants to be in a band and whatever, you know. It's you kind of, it's your validation that he isn't a fuck up, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was yes. good. Um, it was a good night. We got um, uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame uh, in, in Adelaide, South Australia, for the Super Jews and myself. Um, personally and McLeod personally. So it was lovely to be, yeah, have recognition and um, and not that you set out for that sort of stuff, Craig, but at the same time, it's, it's you know, it's nice to, you know, if it comes on, great. Yeah, cool. It's it a good yeah. vibe. So we played there, actually. I got a, got a small extra to play with us and we played some songs and, yeah, it was really good. It was a good night. Very, very cool. Yeah. yeah. Just Thanks, man. Just some, just to stamp on there, and just to say you're doing a good job, you know. Yeah, yeah, totally right. Yeah, thanks. But keep going, keep going, don't stop. Yeah, you well, know? we we ain't planning on stopping just yet. We've got some stuff going on now that's that's really we're really excited about. You know, some songs that we've been writing and really fresh and and kind of new and and you know people, if you're into the band, you know, you're gonna feel that you you. These is part of the same repertoire. It's a really good sound at the minute, so we're happy. We've hit a good, strong writing vein. So, yeah, take a little while, but we're we're here and we're doing it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, speaking of that, um, so what what are the plans uh, for Stu uh, and for the Super Jesus? Okay, so we're going. Um, Okay, for me, it's it's more about songwriting and trying mm. to get get a, a side project up and going that I've, I've had in my back of my mind for a while. Now that we've got time off the road, I can I can concentrate on that. So I have been concentrating on that as well as concentrating on on writing songs for the band. We've got the festival coming up under the Southern Stars, which is with oh, Cheap man. Trick, yes, and Bush, and Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. Um, who did I forget? Live, live uh, Stone, Stone, Temple Pilots. Stone oh. Temple Pilots. Stone Temple Pilots. Yeah. So we've got that coming up, and then obviously that Kiss one in August, which I'll I'll oh, let wow. you know. I'll let you know how. In fact, I'll get some photos. And I'll send them to you, mate. I'll come <laughs> back. <laughs> I'll try and get down there. I, I haven't been home for two years, so I want to come down yeah. and yeah, give me some, something, some motivation other than just family to to come back. Yeah, yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. I think it. What advice would you give to an up and coming musician in, in Australia or anywhere in particular anywhere that there. wants to do wants to do what you do? What advice would you give them? Uh, well, you know, it's I'm not going to I'm going to cut it straight here. It takes a lot of a lot of work and a lot of dedication, but you've got to believe in yourself. I know it sounds mm. corny, and I don't want to sound all like the voice, but you really do have to believe in what you're doing. I mean, and and with that sort of focus and, and then work towards that goal every day, just something yes. small, just keep working towards it. And that's that's what I'd say. And to, to wrap that up in enjoyment, like, yes. you know, at the end of the day, I'm still enjoying it. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm still enjoying what I do. I still, I still rehearse songs at home here because I enjoy doing it, you know, or yeah. working songs out. You know, it's great. It's good fun. So that's that's part of it, you know. And, sure. and, so, and take some time to the music. Always give yourself you know, half an hour a day just to listen to music, whatever. It's good for you. 
Good for yourself, yeah. Ian. Yeah. It's a long, what, what, what's, what's the saying? What's the saying? It's a long way to top if you want to rock and roll. <laughs> oh, absolutely, brother. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and Stu, tell us about your social medias. Where where can we find you and uh, your other side projects? Okay. Well, at this point, you can. I mean, I'm I'm Stu Rudd uh, at Instagram. I think it is. Is that right? Yes. If you, yeah, is that right? Um. Then there's the Super Jesus official. You can go and visit that site and see some of the stuff that we've got going on there. And um, most, uh, my, my other project that I haven't got going up hasn't got a, a site yet, but it's it's the Mercy Villains, and it will be. It's coming soon. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, Stu, you yeah, have to come back on and it. come on and promote promote the new band, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, I'll let you know. Yeah. Oh, all right. Keep you in the loop, man. All right. Excellent. Uh, so, so before we finish, uh, I just asked a few questions, random questions, and give yeah. me your top two or three as of today. Don't sort of think about it too hard. Who are your top three favorite bands of all time? Well, going back, I'd have to say to start it off with was Kiss. I don't know about later on, but I'd say Kiss. Um, I'm kind of a um, I'm kind of a, a Rolling Stones, and uh, and perhaps an ACDC, I'd say. Good. And and tell me uh, your top two or three favorite movies of all time. Oh man, one that was straight to mind was the, the Big Lebowski. I thought that was pretty oh, cool. Oh yes, yes. And um, a Vacation, National Lampoon's Vacation. I'm a fan. All right. Oh, that's a good show as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, uh, I don't know. And three places that you've been to, and uh, that your international destinations, and then three places that you'd like to go to in the future. Yeah. Okay. Um, three that I have um, been to that uh, I like was um, I really liked uh, uh, Vegas, oh, Philadelphia, nice. um, and I liked um, Germany, Berlin. I really like that, yeah. Um, so place I would like to go, if I haven't been, is probably where you are now, would be good, Craig. Um, <laughs> that'd be cool. it's, Shanghai, it's, man. That's an amazing place, yeah. Yeah, I bet, I bet. Shanghai, I'd like to go out to Egypt and, uh, you know, perhaps Japan, I think that'd be fun too. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. Beautiful yeah. place. Yeah. Last, last, last question, Stu, and this is a tough one, but... Who is your greatest inspiration slash hero and why? Uh, oh, look, I'd probably have to say my family, my, yes. my mum. Yeah, I'd say that's, you know, all the effort and support that goes into making me, me is, yeah, I'd say my mum, my parents, yeah. Absolutely. That's a good way to finish it off, Stu. Thanks, man. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Now you're Too a busy easy, man. Craig. Uh, can't wait to get back to Oz and watch the Super Jesus play and uh, even your support bands. I'm really keen. Uh, and oh, your yeah, side projects. I'm uh, very keen to oh, yeah, yeah. sit down there and watch that as well. I'll, I'll, um, I'll send you some stuff, you know, some, some writing, see what you think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. And okay. yeah, one of my, one of my favourite uh, Australian bands and uh, good luck for the Excellent future. Band. Oh, thanks very much, Craig. Really appreciate it. It's been a great gig too, Craig. Good, good program. I love that.